in May of 2007, Lisa Hyden Peters, uh, one of my dear friends who's a breast cancer survivor, called me and asked me if I knew what dragon boat racing was. She called me back and said, would you please just Google it? Just get on the internet and Google it. Google dragon boat racing and breast cancer. That was probably about nine o'clock that night. I think I went to bed at 2 a.m. I read for hours and hours. I could not stop reading about it. Um, dragon boat racing is a 2,000 year old sport that started over in China. A doctor in Canada, Dr. McKenzie, about 12 years ago came up with the concept of doing this for breast cancer survivors for rehabilitation. And I tell you personally, when I got in the boat, I could not reach above my head. And within two months, I was in my cabinets again. And I've been on the team for three years since it started. Uh, the team started in April. I joined in June of that year. And it was about two months after I met my uh, reconstruction surgery. It's a way to go out in, in the boat. The ladies all have had cancer. They talk about it, but they don't talk about it. It's kind of the elephant in the room some days. And some days, it can get pretty uh, lively on the boat. We discuss everything, nothing's taboo. And uh, we have an extensive support system as well, so, so paddlers that are ill, for example, we go and make sure they're doing okay, we'll visit with them. So it's, you know, it's an all-around holistic support group. Uh, it's really competitive when we get out there, but during practice uh, we have a lot of fun in the boat and, you know, it, it, there's a common goal. There's a goal of getting better and getting physically fit, but also just being there for each other. And it's not your conventional support group. I mean, you've got a bunch of ladies that are surly attitude and it fits for me I'm I'm not one to go to one of the support groups that are let's sit and talk about our feelings kinda you know it, it more fits my personality and a lot of these ladies on here you'll find too yeah so the boat is 40 feet long uh, 20 paddlers sit in there and they sit side by side we get very offended if you call it rowing it is paddling you are paddling on one side or the other and uh, we have a drummer that'll sit up front during races we don't typically take the drum out during practice, but uh, they kind of uh, keep the beat with the people in the front of the boat called the leads. And then there's a steers person in the back. It's been a huge change for me, not only physically, but just to know that other people went through the same thing. And it's a great resource for information. You know, even uh, we've had all ages, all physical abilities in the boat. It's not just for the young. We've had, uh, for first year, we had an 85-year-old paddler. I mean, it, it's all, we have people in active treatment right now that are on the boat that are paddling with us. To go to a race is actually quite costly. To go to Peterborough was uh, $8,000 just for the paddler cost alone. So there, there's entry fees associated with this. So a lot of that money goes for that. We just, you know, just if you want to volunteer and just help us out, you know, uh, come and come to practice, come watch, come, you know, come, come and help out. We have a big fundraiser, Pink Paddle Party. Come and help with the Pink Paddle Party. The diversity of the team is, is awesome and uh, the support that they give. I mean, when I first got uh, surgery when I was on the team, one of them showed up in my house that I didn't even know for, I would known him for a month and was cooking me dinner. And I mean, you know, that kind of thing is just, it's priceless really.